Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Plant Science Research and Education Unit. My name is Esteban Rios, I am the forage reader at the University of Florida. My name is Marcelo Valau, I'm the forage extension specialist with UF IFAS. What, what, we, what do we have here in terms of uh, this project with uh, Bermuda grass? So the Bermuda grass project started about six or seven years ago uh, in a collaboration with Dr. Bill Anderson, Lisa Baxter at Georgia, also with Malai Saha at the Nobel Research Institute and Dr. Miguel Castillo at North, North Carolina State University. So we basically screen about 286 uh, different types of Bermuda grasses that are part of the USDA collection uh, across several years and in the four states. And here in Florida, we also had the plots. Besides here at Citra, uh, we, we screened the material in Ona with Dr. Joe Bendromini and in Mariana with Dr. Jose Dubé. After that, we made selections uh, for about nine or 10 um, genotypes that show really improved attributes uh, for biomass production and nutritive value and Bermuda grass stem maggot as well. We are now in the phase uh, of developing some management uh, practices for those new varieties. Uh, in this trial, we are studying uh, basically fertility requirements uh, for, the, for nine different uh, cultivars or experimental lines. And Dr. Marcelo Wallau is also now conducting some establishment trials with those new lines uh, using tops, and some of those results are also looking very promising in terms of improvement for, for planting uh, the material using tops again. Very true. So where does the alfalfa come into this Bermuda grass project? So the alfalfa and Bermuda grass mixture started mm -hmm. a few years ago uh, with a, co a collaboration again with uh, Georgia and Alabama uh, in a project funded by the USDA, uh, the alfalfa project uh, program. Uh, basically, we are looking at mixtures and, and developing management uh, practices for stubble height and cutting interval in order to you know, provide maximum um, forage yield uh, as well as persistence of alfalfa in the Bermuda grass uh, pastures. Okay, so the Bermuda grass and alfalfa project uh, in collaboration with Georgia and Alabama uh, started in 2017. In that first year, we had some issues uh, establishing the alfalfa in the, in the Bermuda grass, primarily because uh, Bermuda grass was not dormant at the time of uh, planting. So we had to reestablish those trials in, in the fall 2018, and this is where we are now. Uh, we have here Tifton 85 Bermuda grass, uh, two alfalfa varieties, Bulldog 805, and also a new line from our breeding program uh, that hopefully will be, will be released in the upcoming uh, year. We are testing the two varieties, and then we are imposing a different uh, treatments, uh, particularly looking at mowing height and also cutting interval in order to determine the best management practices uh, to maximize forage production as well as persistence. Again, uh, we harvested last year. Uh, we are harvesting every two, four, and six weeks at two, four, and six inches. And as you can see, we still have some alfalfas in some of the treatments. And this is the second year again, and, and we're really looking at um, great results in terms of persistence, as well as uh, forage production in, in when, when we have both species growing together. All right, in terms of the alfalfa breeding program, uh, it also started uh, about six years ago or restarted six years ago. Uh, the University of Florida used to have an alfalfa breeding program back in the days. There were a couple of cultivars, Florida 66, Florida 77, and Florida 99 that were released. And they, they have been uh, you know, grown in the southeastern US uh, and, uh, with, with great success. Uh, unfortunately, the distribution of seed for Florida 99 was interrupted. Uh, so that's when we decided to start working with that germoplasm again. Uh, we made selections uh, and now we have a, an improved uh, experimental line that we would like to release in the upcoming years. Um, we are increasing seed right now and hopefully we're gonna be establishing some demo plots in the upcoming seasons. Uh, and then uh, looking at variety release again for improved biomass production and also persistence. Uh, the focus of alfalfa, particularly in Florida with our conditions, uh, most of the growers are looking at um, at least 24 months or 18 months of production. So now we, with the breeding program, what we would like to do is develop uh, a new varieties that can persist uh, for longer time, so can, you can get a, a much better return on your investment when you plant alfalfa. So in, in that sense, uh, our key trait for 
for selection has been persistent during the, the last couple of years, but now we are starting paying attention a little more to foliar diseases primarily during summer, uh, particularly our, under our environmental conditions that are very uh, hot and humid uh, during summer and early fall. So the, the future looks promising, uh, again, looking at a variety release in the near future. But again, uh, trying to start a much broader uh, breeding program for alfalfa in the south, uh, introducing germoplasm not only from other um, states in, in the US, uh, but also from other countries in South. So many, many of the alfalfa breeding projects uh, have been possible, uh, thanks to some of the, our sponsors and collaborators. I would like to thank Dr. Joe Boughton for, for his support and his encouragement and mentorship uh, in terms of alfalfa breeding. Uh, we had a, a trial together looking at, um, at, at different varieties. And I, I think he's also uh, very optimistic with a new variety uh, that will be coming out of our program. I also would like to thank uh, the Plant Breeding Working Group at UF that is sponsoring uh, the assistantship for my PhD student that she's working at in, with genomic selection and curve modeling in alfalfa. Uh, and also UF IFAS for, for the equipment grant uh, support.